Okay, so we move on to round three <coughs> of turn two. We make a quick check to see if the weather screws the round up. It does not. And now we have some interesting situations. Spain and Portugal are both in curious positions. For Spain, they're kind of got a wasted turn if they don't send Columbus out again. Now he took some losses, but I think it's worth making an attempt to land again. He's not going to um, get a big bonus, but at least the turn's not completely wasted if he, if he makes it. We're going to make another shot to land here at the Windward Isles. That's going to be two spaces, uh, which gives him a plus one, plus two for weather, plus three. So he's at that minus three table again. And we'll see if he makes it. Yeah, he makes it with no problem. Okay, great. Now he's got to do the land exploration thing. I'm not sure I want to risk Columbus, because he's around for another couple turns. So I'm just going to send that dude over there. Uh, he's only at minus one, like Columbus would be. He gets a four. That's a success, but he has a star. Now he has a three, and he is unfortunately killed, which means next turn we'll get a different, or maybe the same, uh, conquistador to replace him. Okay, that's great. Columbus didn't make it. He's at sea. Um, but he did discover the Windward Isles. He may have discovered the space as well, actually. Uh, let's mark that down. See, the fact that the guy died, I don't think um, disqualifies him from having successfully explored. That's pretty much the Magellan situation, so I'm going to just mark him down there. Uh, I can look it up if I'm wrong. And where did he land? He landed, I, I don't know which one he landed on. I'll take the far north, uh, actually, so they're kind of interesting which one to choose. These guys are all the same. This guy has an additional port uh, option. He has exposure to this sea as well. So I'm going to put it here because that gives me more opportunity. And now, of course, I have to try to figure out where that is and mark. And this is why I think I've tried this before with a map and it just doesn't work. Um, you can see, I, I can't see what's going on. Um, so I'm going to have to track this on a piece of paper instead. All right, now to Portugal. Portugal's got a different problem. They're going to leave their conquistador here, but they've got to pay to move as well, or else they're going to take um, naval attrition. Now, they can move here without going through any sea zones, and I think that's the best. That'll get the word back to Europe just fine. That counts as part of Europe for returning. Um, I believe. Otherwise, they have to make an attrition roll. Well, it may be worth the attrition roll because then they can get their fleets together. Um, and, but then we got this guy down here. Hmm. All right. I don't know. How many ships do I have? Because maintaining one ship is a really, really expensive procedure. Unless you've got an advantage, and that's what he's got there, and there's only four there. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay the ten bucks and try to get my guys back. If they don't make it, they don't make it. Okay. So this guy is going through a six C zone, and then a five C zone. He only has to worry about the six. He only has to worry about the worst. But if there's multiples of it, it's an issue. Now he's gonna play on the attrition table. There's modifiers, uh, plus two for the weather, no leader, no leader's bad, uh, that's plus two on the die roll modifier, so he gets a nine, that's 70% of his fleet is wiped out, now I have him at, that should be three ships, 
70% uh, of three is going to be two ships. So he's got one ship back, and I'm going to put that over here in this, uh, oh, is that right, four, yeah. I'm going to put that over here. He's at five. Yeah. And we'll see if that other fleet makes it back. It's really unlikely that it will. And I'm going to probably lose my navigator. But I'm sailing back through a six. Oh, but I have a port. And I had a port with the... Uh... Yeah, that gives me the all-friendly. So that's actually a minus one to the die roll. Uh, so it was only 50%. Still comes out two ships. Okay. This guy is going to be traveling back through a six. And then, that's all he's got, just one six. So he's got uh, a navigator of five, which gives him a minus five, minus six, and hitting the six table. He's unlikely to lose anything, he's fine. So we get that back. And I'll do some record keeping and put those extra up. And again, the players probably are just not going uh, to do anything, so I make a quick end of round check. This is round three. Get a one. The turn has ended, which means we come back and do some of the bookkeeping type stuff. It's okay. Everybody's pretty much done with what they were going to do. Um, one of the things that's going to happen, this is going to be able to sail back. The only difference is Columbus can't land and try to establish a colony. Uh, he would get a free landing because of the discovery, but he can't do that because he's still on the boat. He's got to make it home. <coughs> so, here we are at what really is the end of the rounds, not a lot of them. And it's time to start looking at the end of turn actions. And first thing that happens is this redeployment phase bunch of stuff pillaging can be done pirates take their attacks well we have a couple of pirates who are doing attacks here let's show how that works even though this isn't maybe the most important situation for it you know what I forgot to do oh well we'll give them a pass this turn I forgot to move out my privateers um, those are gonna be a real problem in the Mediterranean but it's just so hard. That would have been a real situation because it would have forced the Turks maybe or, or the Spaniards or whatever to defend their investments by sending a ship out. Of course, that's dangerous um, in terms of being a cost and, and, and other effects. All right, well, let's do the simplified version. Uh, we'll remember later. So we got to find the pirate and privateering table, which is over here. And we take a look at all the different modifiers. And for the most part, they don't really have an effect except minus one for a minus one size privateer. Um, or private, uh, pirate. And that's the other table. So now we just make a roll. And we have no pluses, right? Yeah. Well, concerned players minus factor fleet. So, in this case, oh no, no fleets, just uh, just merchant fleets. Gotcha. Okay. So we're at a minus one, and this is liable to just r wipe them out. You can see between a one and a seven, it does. And yes, it does. And yes, it does. So these are just gone. Um, I'll put them here. They're not gone forever. They're going to be set at zero over on somewhere I have a sheet a card in this mess of miners uh, um, fleets but honestly until those private until those pirates are gone those fleets aren't going to re-show up and I'll remove the others because again it's it's automatic um it has almost no effect on play but you can see how much of a pain if you let the privateers survive. Now, in this case, let's say uh, the knights were out here. Well, they would have destroyed this. Um, they can target Turkey only. 
So the Turks are going to have to get a fleet into play against them, and that's going to be difficult. Okay, and in this case, they would have had to pay 10 bucks to sail out there and start fighting the privateer for each round that they did it, as well as taking any attrition. Okay. Native attacks, if there were troops with native, in an area with natives, there's a possibility the natives uprise. In this case, it's just a conquistador. He's safe. Uh, any effects he had came off the uh, exploration table. Um, revolts would uh, grow. Sieges and attrition, well, that has to be taken care of where each side takes uh, attrition, maybe sieges are raised. Uh, naval units return to port. We have to deal with that because we've got good old Columbus here. Now Columbus has to make his way back. He doesn't have to use the discovery table. He's got a six here. That looks like the worst he's got. It's got a modifier. So he's rolling on the attrition table. Now he has his big uh, so he has minus six minus seven to the die roll. It, it's almost impossible he isn't harmed. I mean, this is Columbus after all. And he'll go back and land over here. And I may have to, you know, rearrange the fleets to make sure that I don't have to pay as much. That's one reason to gather them together like that. All right, uh, stability improvement investment. This is something some countries are gonna wanna do. Take a look at the first one, Spain. They would like to improve their stability. Uh, they're not, they don't need, they only need one point of it, though. So let's take a look at Spain. And they're going to have to pay money to do this. Uh, improve stability? Well, the administration of the monarch is a seven. And they have no penalties here because they're not at war. They need to get an 11 or more, okay? Now, it costs them, as with most investments, 30 bucks to get the base. I'm gonna spend 50 if I have the cash to go up one, but I'm not sure I do have the cash. Yeah, I have 135, 115. I'll spend 50 on stability. And that gets me an additional plus one, so I'm at like plus eight. I get a two. No good. No penalty, but no good. And now I'm going to do that for the others. Well, I can do that quickly while I'm on here. We got a lot of time on this video. Okay. There's really, well, nah, I better, I'll come back. So England spent 50 bucks, got two, and... Venice spent a hundred bucks and got three, getting them out of kind of the trouble that they were in. Um, it's bad to be in the negative zone with your stability. Being positive, as, as long as you're positive, it's okay. It's good to be a positive three, though, which is why Spain threw some money in. Got the investments uh, recorded here, and now we go on and hit prosperity. Well, what the hell is that? Hmm. I gotta look that sucker up. Uh, you get some kind of bonus for increasing your income every turn. I know it's not an effect the first turn of the game. Death and placement of new leaders. I'd have to look at all the leaders on the board, okay? Every single one of them to see if their turn marker over here is the current turn, in which case they disappear. Now, nobody dies on turn one, so I'm not gonna do that. But we can see Columbus will die on turn three, which is fairly soon. Uh, there may be a turn two death as well, but I don't think so. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it's not that big a deal. Because once you start setting up and playing with your pieces, you say, ah, he should have died last turn, damn. You know, you just take him off the board. Um, okay. And we have to worry about inflation and victory points. So I'm going to come back with those actions, and then we'll wrap this one up. Okay, so I went pawing through everything. I lost where I am. Got rid of that box because I lost my uh, my Dutch, whom I need, even though they're not in the game, because I forgot to record their trading fleets that they added this turn. I added them uh, through one down here and one over here. This is uh, under Venice's control, and they're going to become the Dutch, so that all works pretty well. 
they get to kind of avoid hurting themselves in the Mediterranean while uh, improving their position for era three. Okay, so now prosperity is like I thought. I have to keep track of how much money each country makes each turn. Um, if they make more on one turn than they made the last, they don't get a bonus, but if they make two turns in a row, they get a stability improvement. And that can be kind of a, a, a continuous effect, right? So that you can afford to spend stability because you're going to get some back. Early in the game, it doesn't count. You can't get that. But starting turn three, you can. And that can kind of pay off some of your expenditures for war. There's another thing that I didn't explain with expenditures for war. If Turkey had gone to war with the Mamluks, they would have had to pay victory points for it as well. I think five victory points for a declaration without a Cassus Belli. It's ten against a major power. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, death and placement of new leaders. No biggie there. Uh, I'll add the new leaders in a bit. Inflation. There is no inflation because no gold's coming into Europe. I'm not sure this is the correct interpretation. There is gold coming in uh, from Cote d'Or, but it's assessed as European gold. So it's not until the treasures start producing that I have to roll for inflation. So right now, this is my inflation rate, but it's 5%. Everybody's money is going to get cut by 5%, and I just have to record that down here. Okay, now, and I'll do that, but no real reason. Victory points calculation, I've done that already. Every, really, everything that's happened here has been kind of tracked during the game. Uh, but at the end of every turn, you get your stability victory points. Oh, and there may be some end of turn victory points that I didn't count. Uh, I do not see any. I don't think they actually exist. I think that's if you add up all the victory points for the turn you have a space for. But what I'm doing is I'm keeping the total number down here in the end of period victory points and that'll just accumulate throughout the period. Eventually I'll have to drop down to the end of campaign victory points or something. I don't know. But really I see no reason to you know distinguish it that much the way the sheet is working. Um, I guess I don't, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the big thing that got added at the end is the stability victory points and we see almost everybody's just got a few handful except for Portugal who's picked up 50 for discovering America. Um, normally that would go to Spain. All right well that's it. Now I do the calculations on that money and well I can load this up before that. Actually I did want to catch them just to show what the money is like at the end of the turn. We see most of the people are kind of kicking around where they were. Spain, with their disastrous economic situation, is down to 81 bucks. Portugal's still about where they were. They gained a little bit. Turkey, about where they were. Venice dropped down to 17 because of the big investment they threw in for their stability. Well, guess what? That is the end of one turn. We'll be bringing these leaders on and starting the next turn. And hopefully I'll take a lot less time on it. But... Although I'm going to kind of gloss over things and not go into all the details of, you know, how the me mechanisms work in the game, I do want to point out, it's still at some point I'm going to touch on, hey, look, there's some combat. It'll probably be next turn. So it may take a couple of videos instead of just uh, one. I'm hoping to get this down, though, to not just one video per turn, but because, you know, the the entry in my geeks list is going to be ridiculous with 60 different videos being attached to it. It'll be like the SPQR one. All right, cheers.